Hey, welcome to Mr. Otter's studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a watercolor mixing chart. So this is a really helpful exercise when you start using watercolor. I'm going to show you how to take the standard eight color watercolor set and turn it into 64 different colors. So these are the supplies that you'll need. You're going to need some watercolors and I'm using this Prang eight color watercolor set and it just comes with the standard colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. You need a watercolor brush. And I'm using this Master's Touch number four round brush. Use whatever brush you have. Use whatever watercolors you have. I'm using this Arches 140 pound cold pressed paper and I'm using the nine by 12 inch size. Also, I wanted to show you, as we talk about the paper, this is just normal notebook paper. So this would be like printer paper, it's thinner paper. Look at the difference. When you're using watercolor paper, do you see how it absorbs and you get a nice flat wash without any of these gradations? That's one of the differences between watercolor paper and normal paper. Also, on the watercolor paper, I can go over the same area a few times without worrying that I'm going to rip my paper or tear through my paper. But in your notebook paper or printer normal paper, you're going to be, have to be really careful not to scrub those areas or else you'll go right through your paper. But if this is the only paper you have, you can still use it. You're going to need a pencil. You can use a pen or I'm just using this Sharpie permanent marker to write down the colors that you're using so that later you can use this watercolor chart as a reference. You will need a paper towel. After we do a set of colors, we're going to need to clean out our tray. So I have two pieces and you need some water and a ruler is optional. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be making an eight by eight square chart. So that's going to create 64 different squares. If you don't want to use a ruler or you don't have a ruler, here is how to draw. So you just draw the square, divide it in half and then divide it in half again. And then you're going to divide this section in half, this section in half, and then the same way across horizontally, this section in half, this section in half. And then we're gonna do the same thing to every one of these squares. So this section, continue on with this row. And now horizontally, we're gonna do this section. So now we have eight squares here and eight squares here, making a total of 64 squares. If you want your chart to be more exact, you can use a ruler. My paper is nine inches wide, so I'm gonna use an inch for my square marks. So I'm just going to make a line across the top and I'm gonna mark every inch. Then I'm going to make a line along the side and I'm gonna make a mark at every inch. And then before I measure this one, I just want to make sure that this line is eight inches below that one. Might be a little bit high. So I'm going to bring it up to this point right here. Because you'll find sometimes you measure eight inches and it kind of goes up and it kind of goes down. So just make a mark, make a line across. And again, mark every inch. Do the same thing on this line. And then go ahead and use your ruler to connect those lines. And you can draw these lines really lightly. Also, you don't have to make this chart in a, in a grid. You could use circles, whatever. I just have found this is the easiest for me. Now you can take your pencil or your pen, and before we start painting, I want you to label it. And that's so later, if you're trying to figure out how you got certain colors, you can just use the coordinates on the side, or the colors that are here, and you can find, oh, how did I make that color? Oh, I used that color and this color. We'll write down the colors as they are in our watercolor set. So we'll start with red and we'll end with black. You can write the whole color out or you can just put an initial. I'll write the whole color out just so you can see it. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. Write the same colors in the same order going this way, beginning with red. Once we have these labeled, we are ready to begin. So make sure you have your water, your paper towel, and your paintbrush. So these colors, as they appear here, will be going diagonally this way. We're going to start with red, and we're going to be mixing more red than orange, more red than yellow, more red than green, so that when we mix, for example, a red-green here, it's going to be a slightly different color than the green-red that we have here. So these colors will have more red, these will have more orange. I'm gonna show you how to mix these first two or three rows, and then you can continue on your own really quickly before before we begin, I just want to show you how we are mixing the colors. We're going to be mixing these two colors for this square, and these two colors for this square, and these two colors for this square. What about this square? These two colors. So we're using this grid. So the color that is to the left of it and the color that is on top of it. Also remember to wash your brush in between colors. So let's start with red, and you'll notice I'm going to be making puddles off to the side. I'm not going to be dipping directly into my colors. 
Starting with red, you can make a circle, you can paint the whole square in, fill it in however you want. Make sure you don't bring it right into the next square. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to that puddle now, but I still want it to be more red than orange. For the red yellow, so I just want you to see what happens when you add a little bit of yellow to your red. Okay, now green and red are across from each other on the color wheel, so this is going to make more of a gray color, but I want it to be more red than green. Then red and blue, you might know what those make already. They make purple or violet. Now what happens when we mix red with violet? Now we'll mix red with brown. Now when you're mixing black with your colors, be careful. Black is really powerful, so you don't need to add very much. Each time you finish a row, you're gonna do this. Drop a little water in your tray, grab a paper towel, and clean it out. Now that we've cleaned out our tray, we're ready to start the next color, orange. We're not gonna paint orange right here. This is where it gets a little tricky. We're gonna paint orange here because this would be orange mixed with red. We just want orange, orange. Now let's mix it with a little red. This should be more orange than red. So this will be orange with a little bit of yellow. All right, now let's take orange and mix it with green. Now let's mix orange with blue. Okay, orange and violet. And then orange and brown. And then last, orange and black. All right, now I'll show you just the beginning of the yellow and then I want you to continue on doing this on your own. If you get confused, I will show it sped up so that you can see what I'm doing if you miss a step. But just remember when you start, you wanna make sure to get that main color in first. So yellow, I'm not gonna paint it right here. I'm going to paint it where yellow and yellow meet, right? So we wanna get our just saturated yellow right in this square first. Oh, I forgot to do this, this is important. Remember, after you finish a row, drop a little water in your tray and clean it out. All right, so let's go back to the beginning after you've rinsed this out and let's go ahead and mix yellow with red. And I'm gonna mix yellow with orange. Now what's gonna happen when we mix yellow with green? Okay, now mix yellow with blue. Okay, and then and then yellow with brown, and then yellow and black. Okay, now do the same thing with each of these rows, and remember very first you wanna paint that solid color in. So if we're painting green, first we wanna find where green and green match up and paint the green right there. To make sure you clean out your tray first. Okay, once you've finished mixing the colors, that's all for this color chart. Wait for it to be completely dry and then you can erase your grid lines. 
So this would be a more advanced thing you can do, you know, to take each one of these squares, like this blue-brown, and then create this value chart so you can see the whole range of colors. Adding more water or less water is gonna change these values. And if you're making a painting and you want to make your green darker, you don't just have to add black, right? You could add red, that definitely made it darker, or even orange made it darker. But you can get this nice range of greens by adding each one of these colors. The simple watercolor set actually has so much more potential once you do these color mixing charts. And remember, let it completely dry before you erase it. And keep this, keep this in your sketchbook, keep it in a portfolio or a notebook, somewhere where you can use it as a reference. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it helped you use your watercolors more effectively. Have a wonderful day. We will see you around on YouTube.